Good afternoon and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us in today's webinar. As we all know, school has already started and most of us have been adjusting both in the virtual setting and of course in getting back in chat while doing our plays. Kaya naman ngayon, para sa ating mga live viewers, gusto namin kayong kamustahin. Kamusta ka ngayon nagsisimula na ang ating online class? Ayan, pwede niyong i-comment sa ating comment section below kung kamusta kayo. And also, we would appreciate if you'd comment what school you're from and your year. And if kung galing ka naman sa PLM, kindly comment what college you're from and also your year. Para naman maging interactive tayo for today's webinar and to acknowledge the presence of our live viewers na kasama natin today. And I hope we're doing all fine, at least, especially na it's really hard to cope up or adjust with these trying times. Anyway, we know that most of you have already intended plans this weekend, but here you are, lending your time and efforts to be here. So guys, make sure to find your most comfortable spot in your home to relax and listen, because we have a lot in store for you. Anyway, we also like to acknowledge the presence of students from University of Santo Tomas, University of the Philippines, Polytechnic University of the Philippines, University of... Technological University of the Philippines, Bulacan State University, Colegio de San Juan de Letran, and students from National University, and also students from PLM. So thank you for making time to attend our today's webinar. Well, good afternoon. I am Dorothy Jane Del Rosario. And I am Angeli Pastrano. Welcome to Arquitecturo, an online lecture series to help you get back on track and adjust with our new learning environment presented by the College of Architecture and Urban Planning Student Council. Okay, welcome everyone. But just a little housekeeping before we get started. If you guys have any questions or concerns during the presentation, please type them in the comment box below or save them up for later after the seminar proper. Also take note to please keep your comments professional and relevant to the webinar. But without further ado, we will turn the time over to our first speaker. So she holds a Bachelor of Science in Interior Designer from University of Santo Tomas and was able to graduate magna cum laude. Was awarded Benavides Outstanding Ach Achievement Award two consecutive years for winning Nippon Paint Young Designer Awards in 2015 and brought home the Interior Design Quizby Trophy in 2016 for her university. Wow. She worked in one of the most prestigious firms of XBD Collective in Dubai, UAE, focusing on residential interiors and have worked freelance with Lion Halwani Interior Architecture before moving back to the Philippines to work with interior designer Kim Montoya on commercial interior design and restaurants well known here in the metro. She also has a passion in arts and creativity and has been a volunteer, art teacher for street children in Manila. Her broad range of experience and accomplishments really shows how this empowered woman is taking over her field. So to discuss the design process and conceptualization in interiors with regards to residential and commercial, please welcome Ms. Martha Thomas. Hello, hello everyone. Do you hear me? Do you hear me, uh, Trisha? Do you hear me, guys? Give me a thumbs up if you hear me. Okay. Yes, okay. Yes. okay. So, good afternoon. Thank you. Okay. Good afternoon. So, uh, so yeah. So everyone, uh, welcome to today's uh event. So super na haka pressure. So break introduction. And I hope mabigyan ko na justice yung introduction na yan. So dati ako lang nakikiupo lang ako and nanonood ako ng mga speakers kapag nag-speak sila and hahatahan ko pa yung mga kaibigan ko sa mga gantong events. Pero right now, nabigyan ako ng responsibilidad. So I hope you guys make the most out of it. So first, I would just like to salute yung mga people who organized this event. For all of you guys to get value. So they didn't have to do this, but they do it with the kindness of their heart. So good afternoon, Alette, everyone. I'm Martha. You can all, you can all call me Martha na lang. So today, binigyan ako ng assignment ni Kent to talk about design conceptualization and process plus residential and commercial interior design. So ngayon, my job is not to inform you all about it kasi I know naman that you guys know them and tinuturo yun sa inyo in school. But I hope um, today's event you will learn a lot and be inspired by uh, what I'll share and what the other speaker will be sharing today so that you will leave this room vision activated. So I'll be just sharing my screen. Okay. 
Okay. So here you go. Okay, so I'm here again to talk about design concepts, uh, residential and commercial interior design. Oh, yeah. So first of all, I just wanted to ask you guys, so have you ever experienced a time when you thought of a design idea and you cannot literally sleep at night? So if you get if you guys can relate, kindly type in the comment section, relate, okay? Pull out tayo, so relate, type relate. Kasi you know guys, ako then I really feel you. So I've experienced these kinds of things. Like I cannot really sleep at night because I have an idea in my mind, in my head. But you know that's great kasi you have... It means you have a passion for design. It means you love what you do. And I really believe na atong mga audience na we have right now also have passion in design. That's why you're here to learn, right? So, uh, yeah. So, if we have this idea in our mind. But the catch is, you know, as students, and guilty din ako dito noon, we tend to put all the things that we want in a design, right? So, like for example, oh, ang ganda nung photo na yan, ilalagay ko siya sa design ko. Or, ay, ang ganda nito, lagay ko din. Ay, gusto ko yung ceiling design, ang ganda niya, ilalagay ko rin yan sa design ko. Puro na lang lagay, 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 di ba? <laughs> so, nakaka-relate ba kayo dyan? Pero, you know what? Um, kahit na ganun, di ba? Ang ganda ng kinalabasan, di ba? Kahit na um, you look at different things over the internet, mga inspiration, uh, nilagay mo pa rin lahat ng gusto mo, you still mixed and matched. Pero you ended up with a beautiful, but with a beautiful design, right? So, but let me just tell you, aesthetic design doesn't mean that you have a solid design. Okay, I repeat, aesthetics or uh, a good design, um, beautiful design does not mean it is a solid design. Okay, so what does a solid design mean? A good design or a solid design is well thought of, well researched, and is intelligent. That's why we have a design process, right? So we have a design process so we can simplify, filter out, and just put all the necessary elements that is relevant to our concept. So, but I'm not here to discuss to you all the parts of the process because I'm sure this will be taught or, or are already taught to you by your professors. So what I'll be talking about is something close to my heart, so which is to define the very concept or problem and also the design vision because if you have this everything will follow okay so i'll be discussing this too and then the rest everything will follow na lang. everything will follow through so i came across this quote while doing this presentation so sabi eyes that look are common but they that see are rare so i really love the quote sobra i really love how how it it tells us the but to have a vision. So it, appri it applies in real life, but you know, in the context of design, it also applies. So if you have a vision of what you want to create, everything will follow. So you are definitely in a unique direction. So what makes a good designer or architect ba? So what makes what do you think makes a good designer and architect? How can you say that you are a good designer or architect? Did you notice na all of the famous, 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 famous architects, yung mga well-known around the world and designers I, that I know of are very unique as well, diba? They That's why they made, they made the press, they publish books, they make the books, they get featured, etc., etc. They have different minds. Yes or yes? Yes, right? So, hindi ko kayo nakikita mag-comment kasi I'm in my uh, presentation, but I hope you're commenting, guys. So, their designs kasi are pioneering because it is very different. So because of vision, they have a vision of what they want to create. And that is their influence. They don't care. They make the rules and they set the standards. So how many of you here are bounded by standards? So alam, um, like I have a lot of limiting factors in my head when I design. But uh, we tend to limit ourselves because we have rules and standards and codes in design. I'm not saying that you should go beyond the safety codes of design, but as long as your design is safe and is good for the community, what should stop you, right? So your idea naman is free and people will buy that idea if it's good and it will be your influence, diba? So maybe not now because there are things around, around us that are uh, that are not accepted because of pre-existing beliefs, diba? But times do change. What may not be accepted now could be something useful in the future. So that's a fact. So case number one, 
So I have a pastor. My pastor, when he was in college, he was uh, he had this amazing thesis output. So it's brilliant, but not was not accepted back then. So they said it's not possible. But then when he became one of the R and D employees of a big company, I won't mention the company na. That company appreciated his work, his research, and because of that, they tried to develop it, and it gave birth to what we call now as the Intel Core i7. So, are you familiar with that? So, kung na sa laptop kayo, may kita niyo yung processor niyo, Intel Core i7. So, you're familiar, right? So, you have to unleash your potential as well, and not be bo- not be bounded by pre-limiting beliefs in your environment and in your mind. So, how many of you are familiar with this app? So, most of us, di ba, we use this as a, our source of inspiration. So, the Pinterest, di ba? <laughs> Ako din, I have a lot of pins there and I have a lot of uh, saved images <laughs> from Pinterest. So, we get our moods here, detailed design photos, etc., etc. But, you know, little do we notice, kahit unconsciously, we tend to copy what we see on social media and then we end up with something common na. Uh, everything is parang, kung makikita mo sa social media or sa Pinterest, parang halos nagkakamukha-mukha lang mga design kasi na no, umiikot lang siya, nagro-rotate lang siya because of the inspirational photos. So, you know, I believe that social media is a powerful tool. We get a lot of access to different ideas and inspiration. But do you notice yung mga good designers before, nung wala pang mga ganito, those are the people who are uh, who has a unique taste talaga in design. Kasi they weren't exposed to these kinds of inspiration. So what they see around them, they um, what they do um, when they see something around them, they build something out of it. So I'm sure tinuturo din yun sa inyo as architect student. So yung morphology, right? So kapag tinatransform um, yung one form step by step into another to create a different output. So kung may professors man dito sa, sa live natin or sa stream, correct me if I'm wrong na lang. Okay, so, so inspiration can come from different things, you know? It can come from events like fashion, um different types of experience, future man or past experience that you have, nature, or the senses that you feel around you. So, you know, if you're using Pinterest, um, there's nothing wrong with using it, but you can also look for photos that is definitely not design-related. So you can maybe look for a flower, a fashion statement, a fashion statement, an emotion, sad man bayan or happy or lively, um, a mood, um, that you like chill mood or parang lazy mood uh, or maybe um, anything, anything that can, um, that you can simulate in a design. Tapos it translate mo siya sa design. Okay, so, and yeah, and inspiration is a simulation of events, experience, nature, and senses. So, and once you have that idea, of course, you put it on a sketch. So sketches is the manifestation of ideas. So for whatever your mind is thinking, of course, your hand is producing it. So don't ever trust your memory. Sketches are really important. So do not trust your memory again. So always record your idea on paper because it will become clearer to you if you put it on paper. So when I worked in Dubai, um, when we do our design concepts, we sketch first. We sketch on our floor plan. We sketch on the elevation. We don't use AutoCAD to do the furniture layout. We use our hands. We use sketches. Very traditional, very time-consuming, but still it helps us create a more, let's say, detailed output kasi galing talaga sa mind naman. Unless kapag, uh, unlike kapag nasa AutoCAD, di ba, parang <coughs> may, may template, right? <coughs> Sorry. So, my template. So, yun lang yung nakakalungkot with AutoCAD. So, sa amin with AutoCAD, um, we do it na after all the design is is approved. Kapag approved na yung um, layout, yung final layout will be converted to AutoCAD. Pero yung conceptualization uh, phase, yung furniture layout phase, yung schematic phase, lahat yun nakasketch sa amin. So, kahit, in, kahit na high-tech na yung Yung practice sa Dubai, we still do traditional uh, process when it comes to um, conceptualization. Okay? 
So I'll give you a, an example of a good concept. So right now, guys, what do you see in the photo? So in this um in this interior design, what can you feel out of it? Like, what's the first thing that would come to your mind if you see this photo? So yeah, I cannot really see your photo. I I can see really see your comments, but I hope you guys are are answering on the comments right now. So ako right now, what I can feel from this. Uh, interior is a misty forest. Do you agree? So it's a, it's actually like parang a forest, that was very misty, very cold. So this is the sim the sense that I the experience that I got from this photo, and it's really amazing, right? So it's very unique. It looks unique. I'm even so I've seen this before in my college days, and right now I'm still amazed by how beautiful the concept is. So. Do you imagine? Do you imagine a ballerina, right? A ballerina dancing in a forest. Tapos she's a, she's alone, and um, all she can think of is dance with the wind. Wow, <laughs> dance with the wind. So that's the same. That's the same. I know the experience the ballerina would be having in this dance studio. So it's Anza's dance studio by Tsutsumi and Associates. So what the uh, designers would like to give is a sensation of that. Of that environment. So what they did is, yung mga mirrors. Everything, the three corners of the wall are on mirrors, so that it looks like a limitless environment. And also, if you look at the mirrors, di ba parang foggy siya. So actually, it's meron siyang parang graduated dot stickers na naka naka attach sa mga mirrors para mukang foggy siya. Pero at the same time, you can still see your reflection. And also, kung mapapansin yung very plain yung corners may very curved siya to eliminate the feel na you are in the four corners of the room so what makes you feel is you are actually in a limitless environment or like unbounded environment and yung ceiling if you look at it hindi siya hindi uniform yung lighting layout so isipin niyo pag nasa forest kayo diba yung yung trees it's not it's random diba tapos you just only get like um blots of light coming in. So that's the same simulation. Diba? So yan, nakikita ko na yung comments niya. So wow, ganda, right? Diba nakakilig? Nakakilig talaga. If you're really, um, if you're li- really talaga um, looking at the senses and looking at your mind for ideas, you can, you can translate anything from in, from the, to the interior talaga. Okay? Yan. Okay, so what I'll be tackling right now is how do you develop concepts for residential and commercial interiors. So first muna sa residential interiors. So I will quickly run through this lang kasi again, I'll focus more on why on the whys than the house kasi I know um, the hi- the house will follow na as long as you know the whys or the problem. So first, you have to get to know your client and build relationships with them. So your clients are clients. Not just customers na alamin mo lang yung requirement nila, and this and that, and then give out a design. So if you want to build a good client base for your, uh, for, your, ano, for your design business in the future, if you're going to make one, you will be remembered by the relationships you created more than the design you made. Okay, So when you create relationships, you get to know them more. When you get to know them more, you will better understand how to make a home for them. So let's make a design na sumasapul talaga sa puso kasi right now, everything talaga in the design, it's, it looks common na. But, you know, um, in residential design, empathy is really important kasi you have to be in the shoes of the client. And residential design is also personalized. Okay, so you have to ask yourself, um, will my design create more problems to their lifestyle or will it create a better life for the users? Or will it create solutions for the users? So it's very personal. Like for example, if you make um if you make a house or an interior without any users, usually generic lang, right? But if magpapagawa sa yon ng interiors, it will actually translate to their personality. You know, some there are some clients, like for example, in their dining space. They would like an Ottoman, an Ottoman or like a built-in Ottoman beneath their dining table. Because when they eat, pala, they like um hanging their their foot on a stool. So that's why your your dining area has this special feature under. So it's very 
very personalized. So that's how you uh, you create a residential design. It's very personalized. Very um, it really brings out the identity of the client. Okay. So for example, again, when you are designing a house, the you just don't make a cabinet or a built-in shelf, etc. Okay. You have to ask them how many clothes they have, what items they store. Do they have any collections at home that they want to display? And then, pag gagawa ka ng cabinet, you just don't make a cabinet na may hanger rails lang and compartments. You have to create divisions on a cabinet for their, like, for example, underwear, snack ties if they have any, jewelries, bags, shoes. So, everything is personalized to their needs. So, you have to know these details. So, our goal in conceptualizing a residential interior is that it has to be a home than a house or a physical interior. So, magpaparenovate na lang sila sa'yo, of course, it has to be a, a house that they will live for the rest of their lives. So, mahal-mahal kaya magparenovate. So, it has to be something that really identifies them, di ba? So, for many, many years, they would be able to live there if hindi man forever, di ba? So, it has to be something that uh, defines their identity. For example, for Kent Mojica, like, what makes... A, what makes his home for Kent? Diba? What makes Trisha's home for Trisha? So it has to be timeless. It has to be personalized. Okay? So next naman is how to create concepts for in commercial interior. So the first ever thing I look for when I create designs for commercial is the logo. So what does, the lo what does a logo mean? So according to Google... It is a symbol or other design adopted by an organization to identify its product, uniform, vehicle, etc. So in short, it is the identity of the business or the brand. So in designing commercial interiors, mas mabilisan yan. So very fast-paced. So in order to do that, you know, you just have to look at the logo. If you look at the logo, you'll have an idea of the style, the ambience that you want to create, the colors, and even the purpose. Okay, so good commercial interior design brings out the identity of the brand. So it is remembered. Pag nakita mo yung interior, yung element na yun, ma-associate mo na siya agad sa brand. So for example, pag gumawa ka ng interior for McDo, makita mo lang yung element ng McDo, magbumuka, may, may isip mo na agad McDo. Kahit alisin mo yung logo or alisin mo yung name ng store, alam mo agad na McDo siya. Okay, you cannot make a McDo interior tas mukha siyang Jollibee. Okay, so it has to be iconic as well. So a good interior design uh, in interior design na commercial reflects what the uh, brand has to offer. So you can you can go for the brand history, so how the f the space started, so also its purpose and new sentimental value ng space or ng brand. So consumer experience you have to figure out what the end users will do in a space. So are you intending for the users to feel cozy, to stay longer, or just a just for them to consume the goods and the products? So if you know this, you will know the details. For example, yung degree of comfort ng chairs, the tables, and other furniture in a restaurant. So more or less kung fast food yan, Usually, yung seats very uncomfortable para eat and run ka lang. Tapos kapag cafe naman, yung seats would be more comfortable kasi diba, you want people to chill and hang out there. So, yung ambience and consumer activity is also um, a factor of that. So, what is the vibe that you want to create? Okay, what is the vibe that you want to create? Remember, your vibe creates your tribe. So, what kind of people do you want to attract in the space? So, what is your target market? So, you have to um, figure that out. So, yung design bias for oldies, for baguettes, for kids. So, you have to identify that. Para alam mo kung anong style ang gusto, ang pwede mo i-gawin for the project. Pati yung technicalities. It has to be safe ba for the kids? For It has to be um, good for PWD then. So, all of those things. Okay? So, mabilisan lang kasi ang commercial interior design compared sa residential. Okay, so let's now look at different examples. So this is one of the project I did in my previous company. And not I did. So this is the project. I don't want to own anything in my previous company. So this is the projects done in my previous company. 
So it is a showroom in one of the hotels in Dubai. So the spaces are really big in Dubai kasi and people love to gather and the hotel interior is more on styling na lang kasi the structure is already made. So syempre dahil madaming seating, dapat din madami ring dining. So kung ano yung equal nung, nung chair, uh, like, nung seating mo sa living should be equal also for your dining. So meron ding fireplace, ito yung actual. So may fireplace here. Kasi for the winter season, yeah, mainit sa Dubai para pagdating ng October to December, super lamig. So, um, okay din yung fireplace. So, one advice pala, guys. So, if you're doing architecture from scratch, let's say, wala pong shell or form, work with an interior designer na agad. Kasi, interior designer should also have a say dun sa project kahit wala pang laman at all or wala pang shell. Kasi it helps save cost for the client. So, kasi yung interior design can ask if pwede ipamove yung columns, yung partitions, yung window placements. Hindi yung kapag tapos na, saka lang papasok si interior designer and then makita siya ng, makakakita siya ng elements na hindi supportive sa requirement ni client. So, ang mangyayari, papabakbakin and magkakost pa ng mas mataas yung client. And of course, we as designers, we want to have Uh, what we want to give an, a good experience for our clients, right? So, mas maganda, at the start pa lang, work with, an, with, work with an interior designer na agad. At the early stage, para naman, any revisions in the interior can be made pa. Okay? So, yan pati mga columns. So, kami din before, kapag nakita namin na yung partition would be conflicting with the columns, we ask our architects kung pwede i-move yung columns para they can adjust then. So, it has to be teamwork talaga. Okay? So, this one is another project. So, ang client namin dito are Indians and they miss the culture of their home but they also want to keep their space light, airy, and contemporary. So, yung mix nito is, uh, yung design nito is a mix of old and new. So, most of the things here are personalized. Even yung mga furniture, they're um, custom made. So, yeah. If you look at the photo, there are really like um, patterns na very defining sa culture nila. So, here, like may mga mushroom metal panels, the furniture are custom made. Here, may bar because they love, they love um, gathering talaga. People in Dubai loves ga- gathering. And then, here, at may back bar shelves, pero may um, leather uh, sliding door para pwede mo uh, tanggalin and it looks like a statement. And then, pag binuksan mo, it it will be the back bar. Okay. So here, this one, I made this when I graduated from college and moved to Dubai kasi I had to up my game and make my new make new designs kasi I thought my college work back then is not at par with the standards there in Dubai. So I had to create new designs And I was full of energy noon. Hindi talaga ako makatulog kakaisip sa ideas. Parang itinanong ko kanina, I really cannot sleep kasi I have all these ideas in my head. So ito, here I made a spa. And when I did this, I was thinking of, you know, mga nature sounds, yung chirping of the birds, yung the breeze of the wind, tapos yung mga rustle ng leaves. So when I thought of this design, I wanted to simulate that experience Now, if I lie down on that bed, I want to be in that vibe or zone. So, the concept also coincides with the Arab culture. So, if you see, I put like Arab arches with mashrabiya, like modern mashrabiya panels here. Para kapag yung sunlight tumama doon sa panels, it will create a shadow that looks like water. Diba? So, if you're lying down, you want to create that kind of experience. And... Kapag um, nakalay down ka, you look like you're looking like a, you're looking at the canopy of trees. That's why merong ceiling plants there. Okay. Next one, the man is this is more like a furniture design, lang not interior or commercial. So when I thought of this, I was on a bus stop in Dubai, and I found I found it really dragging to wait on the bus. So I made this furniture. So if you see, it's not really comfortable. Kasi I intentionally made it like that para people would not stay too much in the area and people who really needs it will benefit from it. So, may integrated uh, desk din dyan sa furniture. 
So if they want to put coffee or maybe draw while they're waiting or take notes, they can. Okay, very workaholic mga tao sa Dubai talaga. So if they want to work while waiting for a bus, right, they could. Yan. So here, uh, this one, it's a commercial project I did with Interior Kim Montoya. So it's going to be a newly opened restaurant, but right now it's on hold. So so yeah, so mahit, I don't know if you'll see it pa. <laughs> yeah, so it's a newly opened restaurant. So my inspiration was the logo. So all I had to do was look at the logo. So it's funky, cartoonic, and very Japanese if you'll see. So I proceeded with the funky retro design as with neon lights. And then yung colors, you notice, I also it also reflects the colors of the uh, logo. Because if hindi if if ibang kulay, diba, it will look like a different restaurant. It doesn't reflect the brand. So yun, you have to look at the colors of the brand lang din. Ayan. So since a signature style ng interior designer Kim is industrial, of course, we went for the industrial style. So next, ayan. So this one is again done in my previous work in Dubai. So it's an office. So it's a printing company. So yung the very inspiration of this space is the history and corporate identity of the business. So inspired just a vintage printing machine. So as you enter, so makita nyo here, we have the storage with recreated versions of the original letter set in their printing machine. So the theme is industrial to tie it with the whole concept and the identity of the business. Okay. So here it's the um, executive office. Tapos to yung hallway to that. So kung makikita nyo, we just integrated the furniture with the columns and made the storage out of it. Kasi again, um, yung building is done na. So nirent lang naman nila tong space. So, so we had to um, adjust with the structural of the space. So there you go. So... Yeah, there you go. Ang bilis lang, right? So, I hope you got inspired and talagang napi, na, let's see, napiga yung creative juices nyo. But by the way, oh yeah, may bonus treat pala because I was asked also by Ken to briefly talk about Aida. Okay, so before anything else, I just wanted to say na I'm very thankful to Aida kasi it's the very moment I decided to dream big and finally go out of my comfort zone. Siyempre dahil alam kong live tayo, wala nang before and after, but you can look at my account on Facebook, nakita niyo before and after ko. So before I was really shy, very nerdy, dorky, oh my gosh. So it's the moment, I that talaga, it's the moment I decided that whatever I put my mind into, I will do it very well. So I can succeed anywhere as long as I work hard for it. So if you expose yourself to winners, you will eventually think like a winner too, okay? So, my brainwash ka talaga, and that's what happened to me in my journey to Aida. I was surrounded by driven people, but that, but guys, don't get me wrong. So, you have to intentionally surround yourself with positive people. Okay? Intentionally, it has to be your decision to surround yourself with positive people. Don't blame your environment or your situation, because you are the only one who can influence your situation. So I didn't know that until I was exposed to it. And now I'm saying, wag niyo akong gayahin na realize lang. You have to, to ano, decide for your own. So back then, the theme was, here in Ida, was designed with the heart. So yung concept ko dito was to create, so yung ano ko, concept ko dito is to create a walk-in center in Palawan that's very close to my heart because it's my second home. So I wanted to create something that would benefit the community because um, if, I, if I'm not mistaken until now, ha, Palawan doesn't want to urbanize their you know, environment because they want to preserve their nature. So I was thinking, how can I, how can I make the, in, the space of, of Palawan na progressive and at the same time not really harmful? So I was thinking of this. So I was thinking of a very basic um very basic uh, pattern of life, which is yung plant cell. So my very concept for this uh, project was a plant cell. So what I did was, yeah, so if you see, I really searched for plant cell. So my concept, uh, interior design to, but I put a shell. I'm not an architect, so mali architecture na yan, but it's really, uh, no, 
it's really necessary for my project because I my concept is a plant cell, right? So I wanted to to simulate a plant cell environment. So as as water as sunlight comes in, you have this roof that filters water, becomes a water source inside for the interior. Tapos it filters the air inside. So it really works like a plant cell. So what what my foresight for this project is. If it becomes an iconic space in Palawan, then all of the other establishments in Palawan would would follow this kind of ano, this kind of pattern, the flow, like um converting and filtering out like a plant cell. So that's what my vision is back then. So yeah. So this was this this was my sketch before I did the design. So I had so many ideas in mind here. I sketched it so that it would simplify it, but it would simplify it more as I went through the design process. Okay. So just a quick advice lang on how to go about it. So first, the story. So the competition, the competition, guys, it's very story-based and not talent-based. Okay, don't focus much on the technical aspect. You just, don't, you just have to have a good story and a good concept. So the technicals, you know, presentations and other things, it can be improved over time. But the story, the root of the project is very important. So you don't have to have a good, um, you don't have to um, think about good presentation first. Uh, first, think about the root, because a good root would lead you to a good plant, diba? Right? So know the very core. So second, it has to be for the community. So what good does it bring to people? Third, it has to be innovative as well. So when you have an idea, don't say that it might not be feasible. Instead, ask how can I make it feasible. So that's where innovation comes in. So back it up with research and make sure it will work well. Because I am not gonna say that ginawa ng kamo lang yan. Of course, you have to make sure it works. So you also have to have a foresight. So how can your design? Be beneficial to the community in the long term. Okay, how will it be beneficial? Like for example, I was also thinking long term in my project. Na, na if it becomes a success, all the other establishments in Palawan would follow suit. So that was my foresight. So what's the foresight of your project as well? Okay, so to be honest with you guys, your project na to seeing it right now. I cringe at it a bit. I'm really proud of the story, but I cringe at it seeing it. Because I know right now I can improve it. I can do better right now. This a project ko. Because um, I don't think it's at par na, na right now, but it's good. Because at least you know you are a growing individual. Because you you see things differently na, and it also keeps you humble. So what I can share with you, siguro, is the mind, mindset that I had back then. So. Number one, I was also persistent, so I really didn't know how my design will work before. But I was willing to make it work no matter what. Don't be limited. So have a vision like a kid, like I said a while ago. Minsan kasi yung vision natin is based on the limits that you have, that we have. So like yun nga yung mga rules. But you can make your own rules, but you can just make sure that you can defend your rule as well. So when I did this project, hindi ko tinignan yung standards, yung standards and all. I was studying science and how a plant cell works. So you can go out of a part of the paradigm of interior design and architecture. So yung project ko was, let's say, 80% science research and 20% interior and architectural research. So go out, go out talaga of, of our paradigm, okay? Next is exercise your brain. Know that everything can be learned. For people na who are saying na creativity cannot be learned, then you are killing your own vision or dreams. So everything can be learned. Your brain is like a muscle. You can train it. I was trying hard back then to be creative because I'm a type of person na I really want to make something different eh, and I really want to build significance. But I just didn't realize it when I was doing it because I was just excited in designing. But you have to to have that kind of purpose then. Okay, purpose is better than goals. So there is this person that I really respect and is also one of my mentors. By the way, mentors are really important. It gives you feedback. 
So he said to me, he said to us, that more than anything, what you should please is your goals, your mission, and your purpose. So more than anything, um, in doing your projects, um, think about your purpose than just creating design because you're excited. Ka, okay? It has to have a core or a root or a hugot because that, that will make you win in the story behind it. So there you go. So as I end my talk, I just want to tell you guys to have a mindset of a winner. So again, my mentor said, said that success happens twice, first in mind, first in the mind, and first in real life. So be careful of what you think because that will be your reality. So always aim to do your best, not for others, but for yourself. So you can thank you, your future self, for improving now. Okay, so thank you guys, and I will bring you back to your host now. Thank you so much, Ms. Martha Thomas, for such insightful and informative discussion and ideas you've shared with us today. This will surely be helpful for us, especially now our instructors are starting to give us interior design planning plates. Um, gusto ko rin po yung um, sinabi niyo po na kapag ka residential, our goal is to create a home for the user. And kapag ka commercial, our goal is to um, show the identity of the brand. And also, nakaka-relate din po ako no, sinabi niyo po na minsan um, wala kang masyadong ideas, minsan naman nag-overflow, and dapat talaga na ini-sketch natin ang ating mga ideas para ma-visualize natin at ma-materialize yung design ideas. Ayun, right. Sobrang ganda na also you mentioned po na to like, well, planning, we should ask ourselves if this design create more problems to their lifestyle or will it create a uh, better lifestyle for our users. So it is important po talaga no, we should emphasize our clients when we're future professionals. Na, also, you mentioned na if you if you have a if we have a vision of what we want to create, everything will follow. So Bram Nagustohan ko din po Tess, I'm pretty sure na our viewers really learned a lot from your discussion, especially especially those who are taking architectural interiors for the sem freshmen. Yeah, I think. Ayon. So um also Mar Miss Martha mentioned na, uh, ba? If we're point, we should also consult interior designer at the early stage, ba? If we're pointing out the teamworks between an engineer and an architect according to plans, we should also give consideration to other professionals who are also in this field, which is the interior designer. So, of course, you mentioned earlier nga po na it has to be a teamwork. So, thank you so much po for that uh, point. So, at this point, we'll go ahead and entertain some of your questions from our viewers. So, guys, if you have any questions, please type it on the comment box below. We'll entertain it for you. Ayon, so our first question po here is, uh, way back sa pagiging student nyo daw po, uh, pinangihinaan din po ba kayo minsan kapag pangit yung gawa nyo po? So this is from Divine De Jesus. Ayon po, yun yung question niya. So, hi, Divine. Of course. Oh my gosh. Hindi man ako perfect being. I always, I always doubt my designs. I, my friends know that. I always like overthink my design, overthink how I do it, overthink the concept. But you know, you just have to keep going. Eh? You just have to keep going. And right now, I'm telling you right now, you just have to have a good story, um, be cohesive in your design. Because if you have a good story, kahit Kahit ano man yan, kahit hindi ganun kaganda, kahit simple lang yan, it will be a good design. Okay, so don't, again, don't focus on, on the aesthetics, focus on the intelligent the, the intelligence of the design and how it was created. Kasi everything else will follow naman. So if, you're, if your um, work, if you think your work is not at par, then you have to just uh, look at it again baka may mga elements na hindi naman cohesive dun sa story mo or sa root nung, nung project mo. So, you can eliminate the, the element and um, and also um, improve it. So, number one, number one, um, number one advice is detach your emotion, okay? Just have to look at it like it's, a, it's something that you have to do. Okay, you just have to look at it intelligently. Detach your emotions because your emotions can kill you. 
can kill you. My gosh, can kill your project. Just have to. <laughs> you just have to look at it intelligently, objectively, and also just do it. Because there's no other way for you to just do it, diba? So uh, uh, either you you become so emotional or you just do it. So yeah, that's how you. That's how I I see it actually. So before I'm also like you, but right now I'm saying it. Just do it. <laughs> so yon. Yeah. Ayo, and sabi ni Miss Martha, just do it though, detach our emotions. So, uh, for our second question here, Angelique. Yes, yeah, so for our second question, this is from Prince from PLM Kao of Black One Five. Um, may tanong po ako, what are her inspirations when doing designs? And when in self doubt, ano po ang ginagawa niya to overcome this? Ato po, Asha po ay isang freshman, so yun. Wow, okay. So um again yung question was um what's my inspiration and how do I handle self-doubt? Yes, right. Wow. Okay, okay. Sige. So ang inspirations ko sa mga design ko, it depends on the of course it would depend on how on what professor would give us diba, to do. So kapag nalaman ko na yon, again Kasi before ng college pa ako, hindi ako pwede social, social media ano, CV. So, I would look at Google Photos, then, ano, then Pinterest. And you see naman sa Google Photos, wala masyadong maraming inspirational photos. So, yung Pinterest na natutuwa ako afterward. After, ano pala, after college. So, so yung pinaka-inspiration ko ng college ako was more on sketching. Was more on yung experience that I want to create. So you can just have, you can just close your eyes and ask yourself, what do you want to create? Okay, so the senses, the simulation, the experience. Also, if you watch, I know, if you watch, if you watch anime, watch movies, and you can look for inspirations there, the right? and incorporate and incorporate things. So as again, if you use Pinterest, um, you maybe if your if your hobby or if your passion is fashion, for example. Can look at fashion clothes and all of that, the um, couture, and and try to simulate the experience or the experience that you get from to the interior space, diba? So that's how you create the inspiration, so that it can be unique as well, diba? It's really unique, not hindi siya gaya sa or inspired lang from any Pinterest photo. Tapos, uh, uh, second question is how do I deal with self doubt? So again, before I had so many um self doubt but um you just have to be persistent so um i have this friend architect siya um kasama ko siya kasi hindi ko siya work pero kas, kasama ko siya in something that i do so sabi na you have to be persistent like water so al- architect siya diba so sabi na in construction which is this is true you always have to waterproof you always have to waterproof proof everything in construction because water is very persistent diba? it will really make out of its way and destroy the structure that's how water is so you just have to be like water you have to be persistent no kahit my my doubts kahit my self doubt you just have to do it because um, there's no other way for you to just do it because eh? if you don't then magkakaroon ka ng overthinking it will paralyze you so fear paralyzes Faith mobilizes. So you just have to have faith in yourself. Believe in what you can do. Everything can be learned. Don't have a fixed mindset. Have a growth mindset. Everything can be learned. If I want to become a better chef, I have to just have to practice cooking uh, 10 hours a day if I want to. If I want to become a straight A student, I just have to read the books and listen to my professors. If I want to be a designer, I have to also practice and um, give way to to give way or block a time I can practice designing or sketching, diba? So everything can be learned. So the only way for you to cure self-doubt is through actions, not um, not overthinking or contemplating of what you may do wrong. So yun. That's right. So tama po yung sinabi niya, Miss, na um, to cope up, you can be like a water because water is flexible. Whenever you pour it into any shape of container, na ka, kapag cope up siya dun. So just like us, we must um, cope up sa kung anong sitwasyon na meron tayo. And for our next question, 
Okay. So our next question is, it's from John, John D.O. It's his username. So, paano po, mag, paano po pag magkaiba po kayo ng creative idea ng client nyo po, paano nyo po ito nakahandle? Okay, of course, uh, like I said kanina, in a residential or commercial interior, you have to also listen or build relationship to your client. So again, we are we are um we are in a a, a business where we do so, where we are of service, diba. So it's not about us, it's about our client, diba. So you have to really know what your client wants. Yung ano yung idea niya. And because you are a designer and she's not or he's not a designer, you have to make sure yung idea niya would come to life better than he or he or she imagined it at first. So you have to create a, a better a better creative idea based on her idea. Okay? So we're not um hindi naman tayo ano, hindi naman tayo parang we're not doing things alone. So we are doing it um, in the service of others. So of course, we have to really consider it what our clients want and then make something based on it. Okay. And and you can make a good idea and present it to your client. And because if your idea is really good, your client will buy it. It will be your influence. So, but first of all, yun nga, you have to create it in dun sa idea ng client mo. Kasi they're the one who's gonna live or gonna use the space than you. So, make sure client mo talaga yung, yung idea talaga ng client mo yung susundin mo. But you just have to be creative and go outside the box. And you have to be limitless pa rin, even though idea na yan. So, anything naman is an idea. But yung, yung creativity non, yung execution non, you can be limitless. Okay? And you can just sell it to your client and if the idea is well and good, then eventually buy, they will buy it, diba? So yun. Ayun, thank you so much po. So for our last questions, question na lang din, Anjali. Okay, for our last question, this is from Keb Santiago. Uh, Miss Martha, tips for us freshies in terms of doing plays. Okay, okay. So wow, this is hard. Okay, this is hard because when I was a freshie, I also didn't know what to do. Like, lagi akong cram because, di ba? Pag freshie ka, di ba? Lahat ng alam mo begin beginner palang. So you cannot really make advanced work because um you have parang you you you're waiting for your ano your professor's advices ganyan. Pero Siguro what I can what I can tell you for freshies, siguro in terms of doing plates, um have an advanced um uh, learn advanced skills right now. Like for example, kung hindi pa kayo man mag AutoCAD, try to watch videos of AutoCAD, try to watch videos of SketchUp, um try to also like uh, read interior design or architectural magazine so in terms of doing plates it will really help you create um create um a good design and also hindi naman naiiwasan niya na lahat talaga tayo as a student puyat tayo ako din haggard do versus din ako before talagang um la akong tulog pero um you just have to know na it will be worth it so you just have to ask yourself what's more painful the fear of tinatamad or yung, mad- yung instant gratification of tatamarin ka and not doing your best or yung delayed gratification of becoming a good architect yourself. So as I've said kanina, what you do today, you will thank yourself for improving now in the future. So you will thank your future self kasi ginawa mo yun right now and you went through that hardship. So just suck it in and then let it go suck all the challenges you so as a freshie um a lot of um your decisions will be challenged talaga isipin mo parang ito ba talaga yung right course for me kasi hirap hindi ako hindi naman ako magaling magdraw hindi naman ako magaling dito ganyan pero just have to be persistent nanonood ba kayo ng naruto ayan si naruto best example so kahit di siya masyadong magaling but he really wanted to be a ninja. So, <laughs> ginagawa talaga niya lahat to, to do everything else, kahit failure siya, kahit mas maraming mas magaling sa kanya. So, in terms of doing plates, uh, just go for it. And again, practice makes 
permanent, okay? <laughs> Practice makes permanent. Progress is better than perfect. You, ha you just have to learn how to be 1% better each day. So, yun. So, um, um, in terms of practical solution, um, siguro have a time that works for you. So, if, you, if, you're, um, if you're going to rest, think about resting lang. Don't think about plates at the back of your head because it will just make you uh, make you more tired than rested. So have a time, um, make a timetable that really works for you. Kapag for plates lang, for plates lang. Um, maybe if you're an analyzer, because I'm really an analyzer as a student, I really list all the things that I have to do. So for example, for this day, for Monday, in a span of three hours, ito lang gagawin ko. Okay, and I meron akong parang timetable na until I reach the deadline and I make sure yung deadline ko is one week before the deadline. Para kapag, I, kapag merong pang uh, necessary changes, I can do it. So, always try to be, ano, to be ahead para you can have changes pa bago mag-deadline. So, yun. Yes, agree po ako doon sa inyo, Miss, na importante talaga ang time management. Actually, no, freshman din po ako is gumagamit ako ng planner para i- um, ilagay kung kailan yung dates ng mga deadlines. Importante po talaga yan. And also, yung note nyo po na sinabi nyo na laban lang. Progress is progress. Small progress is still progress. Yan. So, yes, may question pa po ba tayo? I think I think is there any questions? Ayan. I think we've all covered uh, we've got, it so, ayun, thank you, thank you very much, Miss Martha. Sobrang helpful talaga sa amin yan, especially na ang hirap mag-deal sa situation ngayon na we're in a different setting. And then, ang hirap, uh, it is thank yung uh, workload from school and workload from home since we're in a pandemic at sobrang hirap talaga to adjust. But thank you so much po kasi yun talaga yung kailangan namin ngayon since we're drained, stressed, over every activities na we're doing. So, we really appreciate that po. So I think we've got no it. Thank you so much, for So you know, uh, by the way, pala guys, uh, I just wanted to add, no. So for the people na most of us na hirapan with, with online classes, and yun nga, I really understand where you're coming from. Like when it's about yung like personal and also your school works nyo kasi online class. But you know, I bet I have this foresight, ha. Na kayo because you experience these challenges, you are actually budding good architects in the future. Because kayo yung nakakuha ng challenges na yun. Again, look at the long-term picture and don't focus on what's in front of you. Just look at long-term. Long-term lang. What will your future self thank you for? So that's it. Yes. Thank you so much po. Sana uh, maraming nakuha ang ating mga students, especially us, of course, sa uh, talk niyo po ngayon. And of course, I think they really do uh, ma-apply nila yun, especially na ngayon uh, maraming activities talaga. So at this point, we would uh, we would like to thank, of course, uh, for sharing with us these things that will certainly prepare us for our future pursuits. So we would also like to give you this token of appreciation. So given these unfore unforeseen disturbances, we won't be able to give it to you personally, but um, take it as a simple remembrance for being with us virtually today. So thank you, Miss Martha Thomas. This is a certificate of appreciation, certificate of appreciation is hereby presented to Ms. Martha D. Thomas for importing their knowledge and insights as a guest speaker of Architectural and Online Lecture Series held this 18th day of October 2020 as a part of the project TAP via YouTube live stream. So together, let's take a step forward. So thank you so much, ma'am, for your um, time and effort to be with us here today. Thank you. Thank you, Asuna. Again, thank you so much, ma'am. We hope that you'll continually share your knowledge to other students, especially in this field. Thank you, Paul. For now, we will be having a short five-minute break, but you guys, promise us, should be back because the next few hours will be filled with a lot more learnings. So, drink your water, stretch, do some breathing exercises if you would like, and make sure to be back after five minutes. Also, don't forget... To like our Facebook page, PLMK Oops Student Council, follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Kaup SE Official. And of course, support our One View, One Step campaign 
by subscribing and watching our videos. It's PLM Architecture on YouTube. Also, for everyone's knowledge, the PLM CAUB student initiated a donation drive called Tulong Estudiante. Its aim is to pursue a better remote learning for CAUB students. For more information, check our official Facebook page. And also, for a last reminder, there will be a feedback form for those who have registered to Architecturo Google Forms, as well as your e-certificates. So let's be back after a five-minute break. What's up, our Isas? I am Sean, your host for today. And for this episode, we're going to have our E Fast Talk. Naghagilap kami ng mga studyante at nagtanong kami tungkol sa iba't ibang preference nila at ng mga common na din nakatanungan nila dito sa college. Ano? Handa ka na ba? Tara! What makes you an RT student? Uh, being an ex. Sino ang lighter sa karano ng kap? Selling the house. In the sentence, I am Alec Desus and I am. Uh, I am. Uy! <laughs> We are love the Please. Form follows function or function follows form. Form follows function. Complete or ended? Complete the sentence. I am Donna Rabbit. I am. I am Donna Rabbit. I am Alicia. Number one, water color na kumakalat o papel na nagigibag? Water color na kumakalat. Walang ligaw, walang tulog. K-drama o play? Do you have a hobby? Yes, yes. Tracing or hobby? Tracing. Complete the sentence, I am Carla Yumon and I am... Okay, I'm an architect. Sino ang huling prof na kinihakan mo? Wala pa eh. Best time for doing plates. Before the basahan. K-drama or plates? K-drama. Complete the sentence, I am Miguel Buhayin and I am... Okay, number one, what makes you an artist? Grammar, shut up. Sino ang taong hinahanap mo doing mo after magpasa ng video? Grammar, shut up. Manyosa ka pala ko? Manyosa. Complete the sentence, I am Krisha Polaresca and I am... The next top model. Number one, drafting or rendering? Rendering. Kulay na aking mong ginagamit na yung rendering. Describe your RD life in one word. Happy. Complete the sentence, I am Carl Angela Santos and I am... I am Yuapsa. Ano ang pagkakain mo lagi na minarating gumagawa ng tayo? Game. So, ang kinapakinggan mo ito, gumagawa ng tayo? Master na ito. Sino ang favorite mong art ito? Ito ko nila! Complete the sentence, I am Carla Gatpanitan and I am... Powerful. Sino ang huling prop o plate na iniyakan mo? Ipi. Kung willing mo ito ba para sa plate? Wala ka. Stadia or rock race? Rock race. Complete the sentence. I am Christian Pico and I am... I am Ano ang isang bagay na hindi ka magaling? Maghintay. Saan ka naman magaling? Keep going. Sino? Go, 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 go. Complete the sentence. I am Danish Padilla and I am... I am strong. Number one, drafting or rendering? Drafting. Kulay na lagi kong ginagamit to yung nag-render ka. Describe your RD life in one word. Nakapag. Nakapag. Complete the sentence. I am Isaac Abu and I am... Bobby. What makes you an RD student? Sino ang taong hinahanap mo after magpasa ng play? Complete the sentence. I am Emerald Kabahog and I am... I am... Favorite your RG program? Chasing Oh, 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 oh
That's all for today. At kung nagustuhan mo ang video na ito, just like, share, and subscribe. And together, let's make Kao Shine! And welcome back everyone again. So if you're new here, don't forget to like our Facebook page, PLM Kaup Student Council. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Kaup SE Official. And of course, support our One View, One Step Forward campaign by subscribing and watching our videos here. It's PLM Architecture on YouTube. So hello, sana nandiyan pa kayo lahat. So anyway, para sa mga alam ko na gumagawa kayo ng plays or yung iba dyan while watching our live. So good luck and kaya natin yan. It's okay to take quick breaks. Remember that... Uh, Huwag natin masyadong pinapagod yung sarili natin. Uh, kasi mahirap sa sitwasyon ngayon. So, yun. Uh, anyway, we know that you're still pump up for today's information. So, let's continue it right away. That is right. So, everyone, prepare yourselves, your notes, or anything where you could jot them down some key points from our next talk. <laughs> It is with great pleasure to introduce to you our second guest speaker, who is a graduate of BS Architecture, a Dean Slister, and third best architecture thesis at the Polytechnic University of the Philippines. He was also an intern architect at the Gucci Plus Royal Architecture and Design in the year 2018. He also participated in publications and exhibition work locally and internationally, even reaching Paris, India, Jakarta, and Surabaya, Indonesia. His thorough hands-on experiences and achievements can surely inspire us, students and aspiring architects. And now, without further ado, let us all welcome Mr. Ken J. L. Reyes. Um, hi, everybody. Again, hello. Hello, hi, Angie. Good afternoon. Hi. Hi. So, uh, can I start for the... Yeah, yeah, for the talk. So, uh, first of all, uh, my topic will be about architectural thesis and uh, its translation to its translation to an architectural design. Well, I have chosen first. I have chosen this uh, topic because uh, I know that it will be really relevant not just for our thesis, our ongoing thesis um, peeps, but not, but also for the incoming uh, fifth year students. So that's why I have chosen <coughs> excuse me, this, top, this particular topic. So I would like to uh, acknowledge all of uh, our listeners. And so, yeah, so I'm Kenji, and this is my talk. So without further ado, let's start with, uh, with this talk. Yeah. Yeah. So first of all, what is an architectural thesis? Well, a lot of people are thinking that uh, yung architectural thesis though is, is just a matter of compliance. It's just uh, something that you have to comply or uh, produce a particular output in uh, in your fifth year art in your fifth year study. But it's more than just that particular notion. So in my uh, in my research in my uh, during my thesis last year, uh, an architectural thesis is actually uh, it's, it's actually a combination or a synergy of uh, different studies, different literature, different um, uh, case studies that are combined together wherein that particular uh, study will have to solve a uh, grounded problem. So what is an architectural thesis? So a thesis should have to be relevant. So kailangan yung thesis mo should be something that has to uh, deal with grounded problem as of the moment. It should something that is really uh, relatable. So uh, in this uh, presentation, I will be sharing with you some of the insights of my uh, thesis wherein you will really see the relevance and the rel relatability of this thesis into uh, our uh, grounded problem as of the moment. And it should be something really original. It's not a copy-paste. Uh, it's something that has to be uh, timely as of the moment. So a thesis isn't about being... Uh, hard. It's actually about doing something significant. So I've remembered some of the lectures of our professors like two years and two years ago. You know, so sabi niya, you don't have to really uh, create a very complex problem or a very cro complex project. You just have to create something that will actually solve a grounded problem. You know? So it's not just proposing a hospital, it's not just proposing a school, but you have to know that your uh, thesis should have to 
be significant, not just for you, not just for your family, just for your community, but for the whole, uh, but for the whole nation, if if ever, or the whole uh, community around the globe. So a thesis topic, guys. Uh, before, uh, sorry, I would want you. I would want to request all of you to list down notes. Especially, this will be a really uh, comprehensive uh, talk, and I would really want to engage you guys to uh, comment down your questions as uh, as we go through. So a thesis topic, going back, a thesis topic should be something that very personal. So I remembered during my thesis, uh, the topic that I've chose was uh, something that is about garbage. It should be, because uh, I was really, I was really fond into environmental uh, thesis, environmental related projects. So what I did was I list down different uh, topics about environment. And uh, first of all, what do you have to think when you are having a thesis, since a thesis is actually uh, a problem-solving tool, so what I did, nilis ko lahat ng potential problems in our environment, and a lot of those problems, as I analyze all of them, is that uh, parang they all narrow down into a certain problem about uh, the environment, and that problem is actually garbage. So I was really fun into that particular. Uh, topic. So I listed down all of those problems, and then the end point was it's about garbage. So maybe my thesis is something that has to deal and solve uh, our grounded problem in terms of uh, garbage. It should be next one. It should be something that's relevant. So it's worth of the research. It should be uh, worth of the uh, investment. Combining with the, um, it should be something manageable and feasible. So. Uh, this uh, uh, these uh, data dito, um, it's not just applicable for those fifth year students. It's I think lahat tayo, even the first years, even your even your place and in, in your uh, first years, kailangan na apply nyo na rin don yung uh, yung notion or your thinking that you are doing a thesis because uh, remember architecture is not just building or designing buildings. Architecture is a problem-solving tool. You are prob you are uh, solving a particular uh, problem using architecture. And what is architecture? Well, architecture is a uh, synergy of both art and science. So you are solving what? So an uh, you solve mo You are solving the climate problem of your uh, site. You are solving uh, material problems and all of those things. The next one is. Uh, yeah. So, ano ba yung grounded problems na tinutukoy ko doon? So, it can be garbage. It can be something about poverty. Uh, this problem can be can actually be traffic and uh, education. It can be something about education. It can be, and I think this uh, problem right here is one of the most relevant and very timely problem that we have right now. So, what it is, it's about health. And so, it's about health. So, you have to really propose uh, an architectural solution on all of those, uh, not just those, but there are lots of problems in our society right now. So one more thing is architecture can only do so much. Not all of the problems that we have right now in our society can be solved and can be answered by architecture because what? Architecture can only do so much. Let's say, for example, one of the uh, most timely and relevant problems that we have right now is uh, the COVID-19. So architecture cannot primarily solve or answer the problem with COVID-19 because uh, we have different prof professionals. But what we can do using architecture is that we may primarily propose a hospital or a clinic wherein all of the actions can be undertaken on that particular uh, building typology wherein using that uh, hospital using architecture we can solve this problem or we can help at least help is this uh, problem so yeah it's it's not just uh, architecture is not isn't the uh, universal uh, solution on all of the, those problems but because architecture can only do so much yeah, and so i want you all to take down notes on this uh, these slides so Whenever you will be having your thesis, or not just your thesis, but any other uh, 
a place that you have uh you you have to have this uh what do you call this this uh, mode of thinking or parang yung set of mind mo to to solve your uh, thesis you have this macro to micro so what's this macro and micro so macro parang siya yung mas malaki and then micro of course it's microscopic it's the smaller one so it's it's a matter of thinking so let's say let's start with uh, your uh, with your uh, problem so for example you are about to solve uh, a problem again it's about the environment so saan ka magsisimula doon hindi ka magsisimula agad doon sa site mo for example meron kang meron kang uh, a project about the environment not because yung site mo is around your barangay or your city, let's say in Quezon City, hindi ka dun agad magsisimula. You have to think of a macro, down to micro, uh, scopic uh, thinking. So, anong gagawin mo dun? Lumabas ka dun sa Quezon City, yung data mo should have to be at least in the international scope. For example, ano ba yung mga environmental problems in the world? So, parang ililist down mo lahat yun for you to narrow down Ano ba yung problem ng ano ba yung environmental problems here in the Philippines and then <coughs> excuse me and then from the Philippines going down to regional scope let's say in NCR let's say you have uh, look you have uh, list down all of your problems and then your data your data uh, narrowed you down to uh, to NCR and then from NCR parang na na lesser parang na narrow down na yung idea mo or yung yung data mo from NCR and then from NCR uh, to Quezon City and then your data should have to narrow you down to a specific site so bakit ganito yung mode of thinking mo because uh, at least hindi mo mala left out yung ibang ideas yung ibang data because uh, thesis is should have to be contextual so where can grounded problem came from? So it should be from observation and experience. Uh, naalala ko nun, bago pa ako mag-thesis, I was really, I was really uh, nervous kasi hindi ko pa alam ko ano yung thesis ko. And then some of my classmates are thinking, ah, I want to, I want to propose a hospital, I want to propose uh, a farming, I want to propose this high-rise building. Well, a thesis isn't just a thesis isn't just uh, a matter of a building typology. It should have to solve a problem. You have to think of that. So, lumabas ako ng school and then parang nagpalibat-libat ako around the campus. And napansin ko, uh, there's a traffic, yes, and then I want to solve this environmental problem. And then napansin ko, lahat ng tao na nakakasalubong ko, lahat sila nagko-contribute on this problem, which is garbage. And then... Yeah, through, so through observation, makikita mo na kahit sa labas ng bahay nyo, merong uh, problem na, and then, iisipan mo yun ng way kung paano ka makakapag, paano mo magagamit yung architecture to solve that particular problem. Next, uh, news and current events, market studies and trends, recurring problems in the community or the vicinity. So all of these uh, sources of the problem kailangan at least dyan mo makita kung ano ba yung problem statement, statement mo. <coughs> okay. The notion between problem and solution. So, uh, going back again, um, ang hirap mag-solve ng solution if you don't know what the problem is. And, uh, yeah. So, please take note of that. Ang hirap mag-solve ng isang solution if hindi mo alam kung ano yung problem na sinasolve mo. So, ano ba yung ibig sabihin nun? Uh, all of all the solutions are correct, but uh, it can be a very mediocre solution or it can be a very critical solving solution. Let's say, for example, uh, nakatira ka sa isang bahay and then nabutas yung bubong nyo. Do you have to get out of your house or parang uh, magmamigrate ka na ba because nasiraan, nasiraan lang yung bubong nyo? It's, it's not actually solving a solution. What you can do is you have to close that uh, or you have to fix that uh, problem or you have to repair it. So you have to really know thoroughly what the problem is that you want to solve and then uh, propose an architectural solution. So so this, uh, again, mindset 
Uh, hindi lang siya for our thesis. It can be applied on your uh, bungalow project for the first year students. It can be uh, applied to it can be applied to two-story buildings. No matter how small or big the building is, uh, architecture can actually solve or at least contribute to that particular problem. And architecture is a problem-solving tool. It's more than just a matter of compliance, guys. Okay. And so blinded by typology. So this is one of the best tips or advice that I got from my professor way back in a fourth year college uh, here in PUP. You should have to be blinded by typology. So <clears throat> why is it? So kapag, uh, kapag hinanapan kayo ng professor nyo, na, let's say, ng isang uh, proposal, and then uh, let's say, let's say you're fifth year na, and then uh, parang ikaw, you have this uh, thinking, so you have this thinking na, I want to propose a hospital, I want to propose uh, a school, I want to propose I want to uh, propose a school or high-rise building. Well, it's not. It's it's not that good thinking. Why? Because uh, building technology is not the answer, but rather architecture is. So, parang nala left out yung different ideas. For example, uh, for example, gusto mong isolve yung problem again. Let's say yung problem about about sa garbage. So, ang unang thinking ng ibang students don is I want to propose a landfill. I want to propose a. I want to uh, propose a recycling facility. Well, it can actually contribute to solve that problem, but essentially, does it actually solve the main problem of that particular problem? But it's it's something that's really mediocre, you know. And so most most people think that recycling is the best way to treat waste. So this one is coming from my thesis. So to treat waste. So, ano ba yung initial na thinking ng tao? Well, people are thinking that recycling is the best way to solve the uh, problem. But then, if you do your research, recycling comes down to at least, ito, parang at the middle of the solution. Pero, what about the other ways to solve this uh, environmental problem? So, we have avoidance, we have reduction, we have reuse, and all of those ideas were again left out if, if, nagbigay ka agad ng building typology with which is a recycling facility or or uh, or a landfill, di ba? So, paano na yung ibang ideas na yun? So, again, I want to encourage a lot of people to have this uh, mind mapping tool. So, what is mind mapping? So, mind mapping is you have this particular uh, subject at the middle and then parang ibabranch out mo yung lahat ng ideas and then from that particular idea, uh, you will be able to see or to seek what are the other branches of this particular topic. And then from there, uh, makikita mo na, ah, ang dami pa palang ways for us to solve this particular problem here in architecture. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, so that's it. So manual drawings. And um, way back again, way back on my thesis, uh, it was, as I remembered, it was June... It was June 2019 last year, and then uh, and then my classmates or some of my classmates are already doing June, July, August, and then parang August na, and then some of my some of uh, the people that I know are doing CAD drawings. They're already doing the 3D renderings, and some of the students are already doing uh, walkthroughs and a lot of those stuff. Which is there's nothing wrong about it, but what you can do is you have to really start with manual drawings. So, parang uh, one month na lang before the pasahan of the thesis, the thesis and puro, puro lang ako manual drawings. Why? Because, you see, the the significance of this manual drawings is mas nagiging critical yung mind mo for you to think of uh, the best solutions on your particular site. So, that's it. Kasi, sabi din sa akin ng professor ko is uh, yung brain natin is directly connected dun sa hands, sa hands natin. So, if ever you have this particular idea and you have to draw it on your paper, mas madaling kang nakapag-analyze, mas madali yung uh, problem solving because, again, you have that solution. Yeah, so, what's this? Yeah, so, first, what I did was... Uh, 
I, I did a SWOT analysis. So by the way, this is just a mere, uh, this is just a mere uh, sketch that they did. Yeah, so uh, after the SWOT analysis, by the way, SWOT analysis stands with, uh, with strength, weaknesses, opportunity, and threats. So using this, I, I've analyzed my site, and then what I did, I list down all of the all of the data of the site. Ano ba yung sukat ng site? Ano ba yung uh, considering? Ano ba yung mga threats ng site? Ano ba yung meron yung site? Ano ba yung vegetation ng site? You see, you don't have to jump up with your head drawings, with your SketchUp 3D modeling tools and stuff like that. You you really have to start with manual drawings. I really suggest you guys do it. And then after that, after ko, wait, okay, get back. So after ko dun sa site planning bubble diagram, again, nag-jump up naman ako sa site planning concept. So what's this? <coughs> so what's this? So I've considered different uh, notions, ideas, and concepts. Again, uh, kung mapapansin nyo dito, it's uh, fully hand-drawn, fully uh, manual uh, written words. And uh, para naalala ko siya, ano yata ito eh, sa, sa tracing paper. So that's it. So that's it. So we have uh, considered process of the site, planning concepts, and all of those stuff. Uh, una kong hinanap doon, ano ba yung existing problems within the site? Ano ba yung existing problems outside the site, nearby the site, within the vicinity? Yan. So site planning, uh, again, and then, we have uh, this research. So us in the PUP, you really have to know the case studies, the literature of the of the study before you jump up with the site. So dito, and there uh, are site layout inspiration, and then Fibonacci, it's the Fibonacci figure. Yeah. So kung mapapansin nyo, dun sa top left corner, kung yan yung uh, diagram kanina. Diba? Andiyan yung avoidance, yung luxury, reuse, recycle, uh, recover, treat, and dispose. I've applied those research dun sa site ko. So, yan. Nakikita nyo mamaya kung paano siya nag-evolve into 3D drawings. So, conceptual site development plan. So, here, this is just a mere draft. And then, uh, kung maalala nyo rin dun sa theory of architecture nyo, and then your principles of access, and then your principles of uh, rhythm, datum, hierarchy. Yeah. So again, remember that your thesis is a manifestation of all of the learnings you have learned during your lower years in your uh, bachelor's degree. So again, ito mga learnings sa to, parang first year or second year college, summit that tinuro. So I've applied all of them to the site ko. So this is a concept of site development, and you have this. And from that, okay, makikita niya may number siya dun sa, up, sa upper left corner. So using it, uh, what he did is, uh, this, is a, this is an isometric view of the drawing. So yeah. So kung mapapansin nyo, nandyan yung, uh, nandyan yung volumetric uh, look ng uh, proposal ko. So kung itignan nyo siyang maigi, uh, you have uh, the create access and then access to public and stuff like that and and then <coughs> using this uh this uh manual drawings i will translate all of them into yeah and i will translate all of this into 3d into 3d rendering or a 3d planning so dito napapasok si sketchup dito napapasok si cad and stuff like that again uh itong process na to was parang two weeks before the pasahan or two weeks before the defense of our uh, thesis. And so very kabada na hao dito. And uh, most of my classmates are already done with their uh, proposals. Others have their floor plans and others have their elevations. Ako, nag analyze pa rin ako and I really study uh, through manual drawings because uh, I know it is my strength so I have to really manifest and uh, take advantage of it. So no matter how impressive the technology gets, architecture cannot divorce itself from drawing. So this was said by Michael Graves way back 2012. So and so way back 2012. So I, I was really inspired by this since uh, maybe 
some of the some of the uh, next slides parang siguro nakita niyo na some of them because it went my post went viral way, way back uh, last May so anyway uh, kahit gaano ka kagaling mag-render kahit gaano ka kagaling mag-cad or let's say uh, sketch up or even uh, rhino zero span or even any uh, any updated least latest softwares that you have if you cannot do or if you cannot analyze your uh, your your plans in your uh, using your hands or using manual drawings ang hirap ang hirap talaga especially architecture well the well architecture ang pinaka mother talaga ng architecture or architectural pl planning is actually manual drawing so you really have to know about it so yeah so how is it then yeah, i actually did and so I actually did all of my analyses and synthesis using this. Actually, that's the way. Yeah, using this. Yeah. So, kung mapapansin nyo, lahat talaga ng analysis ko, hindi ako basa basa nag jump up into. And kung mapapansin, kung makita nyo siya sa screen, hindi ako basa basa nag jump up into uh, digital translation and designs. Lahat talaga yung dapat dumaan sa manual drawing or lahat talaga yung dapat pagdaanan yung kamay ko. Kailangan talaga lahat sila thoroughly analyzed. So what's the difference between analysis and uh, synthesis? So remember that analysis is breaking down a particular idea or a particular concept into pieces. Yan. So yun yung nakita nyo kanina, yung uh, macro to micro. And the list down ko lahat ng uh, significant data lahat ng data na kailangan ko dun sa proposal ko. So kahit kahit bonggalo lang yung project mo, you can act, you can still use analysis and synthesis. So what's so paano mo ma-apply yon? So you have this particular site, you have to gather all the data, ano ba yung ano ba yung location niya or saan ba yung location niya, saan ba yung orientation niya? I-analyze mo siya one by one and then using all of those analyses, you have to to actually combine all of them, ang tawag doon is, uh, yun niya, synthesis. And then, yung na-combined na idea, it is now your thesis. So, sabi nga nila, uh, the more na magaling kang mag-analysis, mas nagiging maganda yung proposal mo. So, ito. Again, uh, ito yung planning strategy na ginawa ko. So, using manual drawings, yan, makita nandito siya. So, using manual drawings, what I did, I've analyzed the site, uh, when you have your thesis, you have to analyze your site, the vicinity of your site, the, the yung, ano ba dito, yung sa loob ng site, yes. Ano ba yung sukat ng site, even yung sukat ng roads, area ng site, kahit gano'ng kalaki or gano'ng kaliit yung building mo, you really have to consider all of these uh, data. You have, you have, really have to analyze all of your data. Even the modes of mobility, ano ba yung meron yung or ano or ano ba or sino sino ba yung dumadaan sa site ko uh, so street users so sino sino ba yung may mga nagbebisikleta may mga pedestrians may mga users motorista private operators and transients <coughs> yeah so guys again if you have questions you can comment them down below so what's this yeah, so not just planning, but then kung makikita niyo dito, I've also did, what's this? A manual drawing of the potential section of my of my proposal. And even, uh, and I was even able to do, what's this? Uh, some hypothetical design of my proposal. So, yeah, siya. So, parang, what if, ano kaya yung look ng proposal ko? If I use tensile structure, so ano ba yun? What if I did parametric design? What if I uh, incorporated it in my proposal? So what is or what may be the potential of, of my proposal? Even the schematic floor plans of my uh, thesis was also uh, was also used or was also incorporated using uh, manual drawing. So as you can see, napakahalaga talaga ng manual drawing. No matter how good you are in manual drawing, Kailangan talaga, or I really suggest, I really uh, encourage you guys to do this manual drawings, schematic floor plans, or even the perspective, I was even able to do it using sketches. Yan. And kung mapapansin nyo, yung, yung iba't ibang 
drawings ka dito, parang, ala lang siya, uh, monochromatic lang siya ng black in green. And so, it's eye candy. <laughs> parang maganda lang siya sa look. So, even the potential uh, floor plans of my development, and then pa rin siya. Using my research, uh, look at the bottom right of the screen, and then pa rin yung, yung graph na avoidance reduction we use. All of them were all incorporated even on the planning part, planning section of my proposal. So, makikita nyo talaga yung research dun sa drawings. So, yung research na yun, uh, talaga napakahalaga talaga ng research, architectural research in floor plans, in uh, elevation, even in section of your, uh, of your proposal, of your thesis, even in the perspective view. So, kung makikita nyo dyan, I was analyzing what will be the potential look of my building if they have trees inside, yan. And even the flow and circulation of it. Even the proposal of the roof or the roof plan, I was uh, even able to do it using sketches. Yan. So, yung right-hand corner naman was this. So, yan. So, nilagyan ko siya ng canopy, even... Even the engineering part of my thesis using sketches. And mind you guys, uh, I was doing this, I was doing these uh, sketches, even most of uh, my kahalala are doing their uh, CAD works and SketchUp works. Yeah. Kasi talagang mas ma-realize mo or mas makita mo yung uh, well-planned design or well-planned uh, floor plans if nagdaan talaga siya sa, ma sa manual drawings kasi mas nagiging critical yung, yung mind mo using it. So, what's this? And so, that's it. So, site details. Dito medyo tinamad na ako mag-drawing. Even, even the canopy outside the site, not just within the building, even the path walks, all of them are uh, well-planned. Even the bus stop. Yan. Kasi, uh, kasi, Mind you guys, your design concept in your thesis, your design concept should have to be uh, visible on your floor plan. So take note of it. Your design concept should be visible on your floor plan, on your, uh, yun nga, it's the planning side, on your floor plan, on your elevation, at the, uh, what's this, site development plan, yun yung labas ng building, or yung vicinity ng building, should be also visible on the perspective or the overall throughout design of your proposal. So all of them, nila talaga well analyzed. So kung mapapansin nyo, if hindi ka, hindi ka nag-undergo sa thesis, sa architectural research, ang hirap mag-design. Why? Because hindi mo na list down lahat ng potential problems that you have, that you really have to solve during your uh, design translation process. So thesis chapters, ito, I think we did discuss naman nato thoroughly sa inyo sa ano nyo. So translation to to design. So at this part, uh, makikita nyo dito na uh, makikita nyo dito na all of those manual drawings will actually manifest on uh, digital translation of the design. So of course, hindi lang siya basta basta manual drawings. You really also have to uh, translate all of them into digital format. So yung mga sketches na pinakita ko sa kanyo sa inyo kanina. I did all of that, and I was able to produce three books and journal siya. Ito isa, tapos yung dalawa na sa kaklasiko. Yan. So, how did I came up with the proposal? And then code study. So, what are code study? Yan yung mga study <laughs> ng uh, building code. And then analysis and synthesis. Yan. And then uh, architectural diagrams. So, okay. Balikan ko yung kanina macro down to micro way of thinking. So, from the Philippines, you have to get all of the idea regarding to the problem statement that you have, and then problem statement, ano ba yung next na national, diba? it's regional, so go out with the regional scale, so it's NCR, and then from NCR, uh, look for all of the potential data, that will look for all of the uh, potential data that will narrow you down to a certain city, and that is Quezon City. And then from Quezon City, look for the best potential site that you have to uh, yun, study for your thesis and then then you propose yung uh, project mo. So from Quezon City, I have chosen a certain site. So yeah. 
There you go. And then we have this, uh, what do you call this? This is actually an architectural diagram. Kung tatanangin ng mga first year or ng mga lower years, ang tawag dito is isometric uh, view of your site. So kung ma makikita nyo and kung mapapansin nyo, uh, ganito, ginaya ko lang din yung parang, parang uh, propose, what's this? Yung parang presentation ni Bjarke Engels, idol kong architect, star architect. So you have this site, mas, uh, mas naiintindihan siya ng client if you do it this way. So we have this particular site, it's 3.5 hectares, and consider all of the setbacks. So what are those setbacks? Ayan yung sa building code. And then after that, uh, connect with the community using the existing roles of your site. Um, paano mas madaling makakapunta sa site mo or sa building mo yung mga tao is consider all of the potential or of all of the existing roles of your proposal. And then from it, uh, lahat ng research mo, uh, I call it as program diagram. So from design nine, kasi yan, uh, if you are you if you are doing your design nine, design nine is your uh, research process, it's your research thesis, and then design ten is yung permits the uh, mas mahila part. It is your way of translating all of your research into an actual building. Yeah. So, eto, eto yung kabuuan ng design nine ko. It's about environmental awareness. Yeah, lahat yan nasa research ko kanina. I call it as a program diagram. So, di ba, parang very massive siya, very intact siya. And then it's very large block. Doesn't look, it doesn't even look like a building. No aesthetic at all. So, I have to break this uh, block into pieces. So, I was able to do it. And then, ito mga building blocks na to, they all represent a certain uh, solution. Again, on what solution? On the problem. And that, what is the problem? It is the garbage. That is uh, the problem in the environmental uh, lifestyle of the community. So that's it. Breaking down of all of them into pieces. And then, uh, kung mapapansin nyo, ito yung sketches ko kanina. So I've mapped it on my side. And then, again, yung mga building blocks ko, I've translated all of them into uh, dispersed of the building, different building parts. So the here we go. So I call it as a program distribution. So per block, they all represent a certain building. And, <clears throat> and mind you guys, uh, whenever you propose a certain structure, you really have to consider its uh, building typology. So what's a building typology? It can be it can be a hospital, it can be an, an it can be a research center, it can be a livelihood building, it can be uh, an educational building and so on and so forth. So yeah, I've uh, distributed all of the programs of my thesis. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, again, if you have questions, just uh, put it down below. Okay, going back. Uh, I've analyzed all of the, all of the, uh, or most of the uh, uh, past thesis. And then what I've uh, encountered, what I've noticed, is parang nagiging typical na meron tayong ganitong look ng uh, site planning doon sa thesis mo. So it looks, for me, it's very formal, it's very mono-use, it looks, it looks very hostile, uh, and then sobrang common niya sa akin. So again, what is a thesis? Thesis is something original. So what I did is I proposed something that looks original, something na friendly for all. So I proposed a uh, site planning concept just like this. So it looks, diba, parang naiiba siya dun sa site. If you look at the site, parang mga building blocks lang yung nasa gilid. Sobrang, sobrang formal nila. And then if you go out in this particular building, it looks very informal. It's very friendly and it's very continuous and very connected. Not just for the people of the community, but uh, for the people of uh, the vicinity. Alright? And then... Yes, we have this site development plan. So we have this, yeah. And then, yeah, we have this uh, particular proposal. So if you look at it, excuse me. And yeah, excuse me. So if you have, uh, if you have uh, your skill in uh, rendering and in uh, presentation, you have to uh, manifest all of your skill on your thesis. So hanggat maaga pa, uh, I would 
encourage you, especially in the lower years, to practice uh, not just manual drawings, but also digital rendering of your pieces. So at least when you are in your fifth year, it, it will be a lot easier for you guys to do your thesis because your talent will uh, actually manifest in your design. Yeah. So, papakita ko lang interiors. <coughs> yeah. So, ito yung interior, you know, isang part ng thesis ko, isang part ng building ko. So, kung mapapansin nyo, is uh, nag-manifest talaga yung, uh, yung concept dun sa gitna. And then, ito yung digital rendering niya from the outside. So, all of them, I've uh, rendered all of them. Yeah, sobrang fulfilling lang. So, dito, ako makikita nyo, ito yung parang main building ko dun sa site ko. It's, it's round. Parang siya yung pinakamalaki because I would want to uh, make it as a centerpiece of my uh, proposal. And then, ito naman sa ibang view. Yeah. Yes. Okay, architectural analysis. Architectural Analysis is one of the most crucial part of your thesis, of your not just thesis, but any type of proposal in architecture that you have. So we have uh, to, they're doing this. So yung iba, ang ginagawa nila, they're doing it on a planned view. So parang nagiging common siya for me. So what they did is, uh, it's an isometric view of uh, this particular thing. And so I am and I'm analyzing I'm analyzing the shared corridors, even the views of the pieces, I mean even the views of the people using any particular building within the site, even the drop off kung saan ba maglalanding yung mga saan ba mag uh, maglaland yung mga tao coming from the different vehicles of the users and then paano ba yung even the flow of the air outside going inside the development and there you go we have this site development plan okay so even yung bagsak ng tubig ng rainwater pababa ng building and even the even the potential uh plumbing of the yeah of the building and yeah so here, uh, my proposal was I have this uh, secondhand market, I have this livelihood center, I have this uh, administrative building, a research center, a hostel accommodation building, an environmental awareness hall. Uh, so nakita nyo siya yung main centerpiece ko kanina yung bilog na building. And lastly, a test building. Yeah. So, so again, kung tignan nyo, one, two, three, oh, so it's actually it's a, a combination of seven buildings. Siya yung representation nung uh, graph kanina na triangular na may, na may uh, disposal, na may avoidance, and then stuff like that. So it's actually, it's really a direct translation of a research going to a design. So that's it. So building analysis. So we have this building analysis. You can analyze your buildings, not just any other building, but any building, hindi lang through planning, hindi lang siya through uh, isometric views, but also using sectional uh, presentation. So dito, kasi may marami kang hindi mapapakita ang uh, analysis eh, using that. So what if hati in main building and show them what are the analysis with your building? So we have classrooms, we have a uh, common corridor, we have, what's this? Indoor courtyard, and then we have, and then what if we have wasted space? And then, doon mo ilagay yung mga utilities mo. So, doon, doon mo ilalagay yung mga outdoor unit and stuff like that. Even the optimal views. And so, kung mapapansin nyo dito, kaya may space sa gitna is for the users to enjoy the view. Kahit nasa ang room ka, meron kang view. Para hindi lang siya, not, para hindi lang siya isang part lang ng building. And then, kung mapapansin nyo rin, yung sketches ko kanina, ang theme nila is green parang meron, meron ka lang green accents yeah, meron ka lang green accents ng, uh, it's just black, white, and then green so, eh, ito siya from the sketches using green uh, markers I've applied these uh, manifestation on my digital translation of my pieces, so that's it from drawing, from manual drawings into the digital uh, renderings of my proposal so that's it. Ito yung nasa right hand side ng screen nyo. It's the, it is what I call as the blow up axonometric view. 
Yeah. So, dyan mo parang uh, hinate yung building mo part by part. So, okay. Just a few reminders for our uh, listeners. Take note, your uh, real-world problem-based thesis. So, your thesis should actually have to solve a real-world problem. Dapat yung, ano niya, dapat meron ka talagang sinosolve na real-world block problem. Hindi ka nagsasolve ng problem na meron yung Pluto. Hindi ka nagsasolve ng problem na hindi mo naman nararanasan o hindi naman nararanasan ng nakararami. Because it can be useless if you're doing a thesis and it's not solving any particular real-world problem. Okay? And then topic, topic must be something to you. Again, yung kanina, uh, naging ganun yung proposal ko because I want to, uh, I'm an environmental lover. <laughs> yes, so I really love the environment. So my proposal, again, manifested on that uh, field. It answers the problem that we have in the environment. So visual presentation, your presentation is, uh, is an eye candy. So kung nakita niyo yung mga presentations ko kanina, I really uh, took much time on uh, the visual presentation so that my jury, not just my jury, but also the audience listening to my presentation will enjoy my presentation habang nagtotok ako. So diagrammatic slides, yung mga slides ko kanina, they're very diagrammatic. And then uh, tips. For uh, all of the audience, uh, macro to micro perspective, kailangan, uh, whenever you face any type of problem, think outside the box. And then from outside the box, you go inside the box. Para hindi mo na narrow down yung idea. Para wala ka na left behind na idea. So you have to take note of that. Kasi if you start on the micro level, kung nano ka na talaga sa pinaka uh, maliit na side mo, na left behind mo yung mas malaking idea. So that's it. So brand your thesis. <coughs> so how do you brand your thesis? So uh, in presentation ko, it's a matter of green, black, and shades of green, black. So mas maganda siyang pignan. And then brand your thesis. Yeah, it's a matter of uh, doing a presentation. You're not just doing a presentation for compliance, but you're doing a presentation for you to be remembered. So yung yun yan. During my thesis, uh, gusto ko na yung presentation ko, it should be something na memorable, not just for the jury, but for also the students listening to, listening to my defense. So delivery is the key to a thesis defense. And so practice public speaking, I encourage uh, most of you guys. Kasi even I, when I was in first year, I, was, I, wasn't, in, I wasn't really able to present on a larger amount of people or on the public or on the public and so again uh, practice the delivery of your thesis para hindi ka nagiging shaky during your uh, presentation manual drawings is equal to critical thinking again walang mali if you start with digital drawing but then i suggest that you start i only suggest but not saying that the other one is wrong i only suggest that you start with manual drawings for you to critically analyze not just your thesis, but even your plates. Yeah. So early preparation. So kung mapapansin nyo, ang dami kong na-produce with just a matter of a semester or yeah, a semester or two semesters because I really prepared so much for this thesis. So that's it. Okay. Last few tips before I end up this talk. And muna ako ng Milo. Okay, last few tips before I end up this uh, talk. Okay, so we we architects, designers, or architectural students can be divided. I, I really uh, believe in this uh, notion. Ano? We can be divided or we can be analyzed or we can be ano ba? Okay, divide na lang. Divided into two categories. You can be a creative architect or you can be a technical architect or a designer. So you have to maximize all of your uh, skills. If you are creative, then show it that your thesis is something that's really creative. You show the people that you're really fond of the creativity or the aesthetics of your uh, building. But remember, your thesis or your creativity isn't just great, um, a mere aesthetic. Kailangan nandun yung value ng development mo or dapat nandun yung strength ng, ng proposal mo, even the utility. So remember the triad, the aesthetic, 
utility and uh, strength. Strength ba? Okay. So, ako, nakita ko naman na hindi ako, wala ko dun sa technical side ng, ng architecture. So, I've really maximized my creativity uh, on presentation. So, yeah. if you're a technical person, then show it to your jury that you're really fond of the technical side of the architecture. Show them the details, show them the technicalities of your uh, proposal, that you're really fond of that. So, mas realize nila that, oh, this student is really good on this. Okay, last few tips. Piece the pens as your own exhibit. So during, yan, kung makikita niyo yung background, uh, it was my inspiration during my presentation. Um, so talagang ginawa akong exhibit yung pieces ko. I really want the, uh, them to feel that they're not on a piece the pens, but they're on a particular exhibit. I really want them to show na ah oh, this piece is really uh, memorable and I really want to watch this piece defense kasi yun din yung goal ko on my uh piece defense kasi dalawa yung piece defense namin so uh ang goal ko talaga noon is uh mas 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 maraming makinig kasi what I'm doing is not just a matter of compliance I want to start an environmental revolution oh at least on that room and then uh, make the jury, make the people, make the community realize that there is an ongoing problem in our environment and, and we have to solve it using our field. And what is our field? It is architecture. Again, thank you so much, uh, PLM College of Architecture and uh, Urban Planning. So that's my talk then. Thank you so much. Again, thank you so much, Sir Reyes, for that insightful discussion. This will surely be beneficial for everyone here, especially to our fifth-year students who are doing their uh, thesis yeah. right now. So, ayon. So, take note uh, to our viewers. Uh, Sir Reyes mentioned earlier that architecture is a problem-solving tool. So, we're not just creating a building to be just a building, diba? Right? With all, with its all aesthetics and so, but. The uh, we do not elevate problems here, right? Uh, we're, uh, kahit na we're talking it, uh, we're taking it out of the field. Hindi natin tinatakbuhan yung isang problema. Instead, we devise a solution or we create a plan and propose it in which all actions can be taken. So, sabi nga ni Sirius kanina, we're solving a real world, world problem here. So, yeah. ayun, and dami rin natin positive feedback from our viewers here regarding your uh, manual drawings and your commun in in how you communicate your ideas through it so yeah again thank you so much sir for giving us a really informative discussion that will surely help us for our future pursuits yeah. so yeah by the way i'm here uh, i am third year students uh, i'm a third year student i am second year professor ah, so meron meron ano may mga nag thesis na rin sa yes. sa yalan right okay. now yung mga fifth year yes. students po. Ah, so uh, All right. I um same din po sa sentiment mo at DJ na architectural thesis is a solution to a problem and as what Mr. Kenji said, it is a manifestation of all of what we've learned. So kaya naman po sa mga seniors natin ngayon na naka, nasa kanilang thesis year na, good luck po and kayang-kaya na po 'yan. And yes, para naman sa ating mga lower years with us work to improve our manual drafting and rendering pa at mag-prepare na rin para sa ating future thesis kapag tayo naman. Actually, as I listen to you po, sir, nakaka-motivate. Nakaka-motivate na i-improve pa yung, ami, yung aking manual drafting kasi dun din talaga nagsisimula ang lahat. Alright, and now let us, hear, let us read some of our viewers' sentiments and questions. For the first question, um, yeah, we have from Miss Talia Hipolito tips po sa costing ng project for design nine. How to come up with your project cost po? Okay. And so design nine pala sa tama. Design nine is parang chapter eight of our thesis. So tips lang for your ano. Uh, I think the rule of thumb for your uh, costing for your thesis is you have to make it as uh, for me, ha, for my project field, as cheaper as possible. But uh, of course, it's a real world 
uh, it's a project-based thesis. So if I present me and hypothetically as a client, so you have to make it as cheaper as possible because as the, the cheaper your prob the cheaper your proposal is, the more that the client will actually uh, approve your design. So that's it. And then one one more thing. Um, uh, look for ano ba? look for what's this? Look for a potential site that has uh, a lower what's this uh, land value. So yeah, because if you compute your ano eh, if you compute your costing for your design line, uh, might as well nagiging mahal siya because mahal yung land ng ano ng ng thesis. Yan. Parang yun yung nagpapamahal dun. Meron siyang formula and I forgot what it is. Pero yun, uh, just rule of thumb lang. Um, the, the cheaper your uh, proposal is, for me, it's the better. Yeah. All right. Ayan. So for our second question naman po is, this is from Miss Kathleen uh, Escanilla. She says na, how do I choose the right topic? One topic, One topic is nice. Is nice. Preferred ng advisor plus it's a bit unique. But my problem is lacking sa RRLs. So the other one naman has a lot of RRLs but it's too challenging. Goes approved but I have to put a lot of effort into it din po. So ano daw po yung, how do she choose the right topic po? Okay. Uh, how do you choose the right topic? Uh, kanina, on the first quarters of my pro of my uh, presentation, I've less done different, uh, this different criteria for uh, choosing a topic. Number one is the relate relatability. Number two, I forgot. And then your relatability, the relevance of the proposal or of, or of the topic. And then one more thing, the timeliness of your, ano. again, uh, for me, ha, it is your proposal and not just a mere proposal by your professor. You're doing this because it is your compliance and not uh, her proposal. Even I, hindi ko rin proposal yung ginawa ko kasi ang sinasuggest niya sa akin is, ang sinasuggest sa akin ni professor is do, uh, do, this? do a recycling facility. And then ako naman, si Makulet, hindi ko siya sinunod because uh, it's not about bragging but I know my thesis more and thoroughly than my professor is and it can be just uh, her opinion. But then, uh, think of it na it's your opportunity for you to at least initially defend your idea na hindi pa nga siya thesis defense and then parang binibitawan mo na agad yung proposal mo. So, come to think of it that it is uh, just an initial uh, thought for you to think that uh, you're, you have this better proposal so you have to back it up with several studies, several literature, the view of the related literature, case studies, and more of the background of the study for you to uh, propose something that you like, something that you're in it, and something that uh, uh, mas gusto mo. Because if you propose or if you do some, if you do a proposal na hindi mo gusto, mas madali ka mapapagod dun sa ginagawa mo kasi hindi mo siya gusto eh. Parang gusto siya ang gawin ng uh, propose ng ng professor mo and you're and you're doing it just for a matter of compliance not because you you really love that proposal i think that that's uh, it. uh also approved but i have uh, to put a lot of effort in it then yun so yun nga yung rl okay may tip ako for the rl just to answer your question so yung rl uh nasa chapter 3 namin yan sa pup so Divide mo si RRL into, into maybe three categories. Parang one of the RRL focuses on the typology. Isang RRL focuses on the concept. Isang RRL focuses on the uh, approach of your thesis. And then uh, different RRLs na yun. Parang iba-iba na sila ng focus. And then from that point is uh, uh, get different uh, uh, studies or uh, different articles done and then include all of them. Ayan. Para mas madali siyang ma para mas madali kang magawa ng RRL. Ayun, so I think that answers the Miss Cat's question. So next question. Okay, thank you for that, sir. For our third question, we have Miss Allery Audrey Resurrection. 
Hello po! Since delikado pa po lumabas to research about our topic, may recommendation po ba kayong website or way to get data or information? Okay. So, dito naman, um, since most since we're in the digital world, so really most of our data should have to come up, come up from the internet. So, I would suggest, um, first, pwede niyong pagkunan ng potential topic or potential data is uh, UN, wait lang ha, UN, uh, UN Climate, what's this? Un United Nations, uh, United Nations uh, Climate Revolution, I think, parang ganun siya. Yan, parang andun, andun yung different topics for you to find out. And then, um, one more thing is uh, library portals, yung mga online library na meron tayo. Since, uh, dapat yung mga data na nakukuha nyo, yung mga information na nakukuha nyo, dapat yun scholarly, academically, and not just coming from the Wikipedia, Wikipedia or parang, ano eh, parang dapat academically uh, relevant yung pagkukuha ninyo ng data, and not just a matter of uh, encyclopedia or uh, Wikipedia, ganyan. Yan, or school portals, school library, and then, uh, ayun, Google, Google Scholar, ayun, one more, um, Google Scholar. Yeah. All right, Ate Oli, I hope um, nakuha niyo po ang nais niyo pong sagot for our next question. And for our next question, it's from Berlin Alejo. Ang tanong po niya is, tips po if ever someone wants to shift course from College of Science to CAF, I think it's from TUP, to BS Architecture. Ayan. Oh, ano daw po ang tips para if she wants to uh, shift course from the College of Science to College of Architecture? Uh, hindi mo naman mean doon na ano, di ba, na how parang says, tips po if someone wants to shift from College of Science to, to CAFA. I think, uh, kasi we as designers, we as architects, we really view uh, the world differently. So if you want to uh, transfer on a particular course related to our course, which is BS Architecture, uh, I would suggest you to read uh, different uh, architectural books para, I guess, para maging handa ka dun sa kunin mong profession or field. And then, uh, maybe you can uh, look for different architectural designs para, again, maging uh, prepared ka dun sa bagong uh, profession na gusto mong itakin. Because yeah. very different, kami, I mean, yung course namin, it's very different because it's uh, it's actually a combination of art and science. So, parang andan din yung uh, portion of engineering, and then yung portion of art-related uh, studies. So, yun. That's why it's a five-year course. Ayan, thank you so much. Well, I think we have another question here. Yes, for another question from Christopher Bombales. Just want to ask lang po, paano po yung naging justification nyo? Like, galing po ba yun sa house bill or article? Paano po yung support nun na need yung project? Okay, it's a good question. So, justification of the study, um, usually, that's why, it, it, that's why it is called as a pro project-based design. And then, uh, yung justification ko, it really come from uh, the law. Not just a house bill, but the law. Uh, if you check out the RA, RA 9003 or the Ecological Solid Waste Management Act of 2001, it's actually from, two, it's actually from two, 1998, but then it was approved by uh, 2001 by Gloria. So if you look at it, and then yung law, yan, naalala pa siya, it's under Section 7 and under paragraph number three of the law. Yan. And then siya. So it's not just house bill. And then if gusto mong i-propose si house bill or si, ar or si article, your house bill should be approved as of uh, third reading. Not just first reading or second reading, but third reading para mas nag magiging more justifiable siya. I think this is very jargon for uh, fifth year students. But uh, for lower years like you guys, uh, your project should be a real world problem. So, pwede kayong tumingin sa mga art, uh, articles, sa mga house bill, gaya ng tanong niya. 
um, para meron kang pinanghahawakan na legal basis. It is what we call as legal basis. Na parang meron, sinabi sa batas na kailangan mag-propose ka ng isang ganitong building. And then, uh, yun, galing siya sa batas and it is uh, legal basis. Not just, I want to propose something like this, I want to propose something like that. No, kailangan meron kang basis, which is a legal basis, which can be a, an article, which can be a house bill, or even a law. Ayun. All right, so, Mr. Christopher, so, I hope it's a good one at the question. We have another question. We have another question from Mr. EJ Ponsalan. It says here that, how did you develop your presenting skills during your lower years in undergrad? Can you give yeah. us, can you give us tips pa? Thank you. Okay, uh, I like the question. And it's a good, it's a very good question. So if you're coming from a first year, second year, or even a lower year, uh, I would suggest you guys to participate on uh, public speaking, any kind of public public speaking. I know na ang hirap niyang gawin. I know na it's, kasi ako, uh, nasanay na rin ako kasi I really do this uh, occasionally, itong pagtatok na ganito. So, uh, yun, I would suggest you guys to, uh, again, not just do your do your plates but you also have to practice on presenting your plates presenting every detail of your plates um if you have the opportunity to talk to a lot of people you have to practice with them i understand that you can be you may be uh, an introvert or an extrovert but it's a matter of disadvantage and advantages but you just have to practice and practice makes sabi nga, ni, ano, kanina, practice makes permanent and then if you do your practices Essentially, you will be able to present your uh, your uh, your any plate that you have. And then one more thing, um, suggestion lang pala. Uh, ayun. Hindi siya hindi siya lang siya pagandahan ng plates or hindi lang siya hindi lang siya pagandahan ng designs, but pagandahan din siya ng way of presentation. Kasi the more na madaling ka mag present ng pieces mo or ng any plate mo, not just pieces. If you know how to present and you know how to talk to your jury, to your audience, it will be easier for you to uh, explain your side. It will be easier for you to pass your uh, your plate. Yeah. Hey, practice, thank practice. you so much. And sabi nga ni, ano, ni Sir, uh, practice... Makes permanent. Sabi rin ni Ms. Marta kanina. Sabi rin ni Ms. Marta kanina. So I think we have a last question here. Yeah. Okay, for the last question, sir. This is from Shaina Marie Cabrera. This is like the last but hardest battle. Lahat tayo na cha challenge mentally, emotionally, etc. How about you, sir? How do you handle stress or breakdowns while doing your thesis? Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, so yung shout out lang yung na yan, best friend ko. <laughs> yeah, so uh, if you if you have uh, an emotional breakdown, especially for your during your thesis, kasi ako, I would just like to share my ex my experiences during my thesis. Uh, nung thesis ko, I really have like a lot of uh, emotional and mental breakdowns. So whenever I am having those emotional breakdowns, I really stop on doing my thesis. Not, hindi, hindi pala stop, but, sorry. I pause on uh, doing my thesis and then maybe lalabas ako or kakain ako or doing the things that uh, hindi related sa thesis ko. And then, ako kasi I am easily... Uh, distracted by uh, different uh, variables, different factors. So, ayun, nag-games ako or <laughs> Mobile Legends. And so, different game, different things. And then, talk to people. Talk to your friends, talk to your families or maybe friends. Friends is enough. Yeah, talk to uh, different people na parang for you to at least uh, ease your um, your thinking about your thesis, because I know and I really understand how hard it is for you to finish your thesis. So emotionally, mentally, I really uh, experienced all of those. And I, I just suggest you guys to uh, maybe pause for a matter of uh, hours and then maybe get back to your thesis, do, do your thesis once again. Because at the end of the day, it will all uh, be worth it. At the end of the day, it will all uh, pay back to you. And uh, as a matter of time, if napapagod ka sa thesis more, any plate that you have, just remember na 
thinking na isang gabi pa ba or isang sem ulit. So, finish it for, ano, uh, maybe have another night. Uh, isang gabi pa ba or isang, isang sem. So, ganun. Parang, it's a matter of uh, tapos, taposin mo yung thesis ko ganun. Then, ah, yun, yun, yun. Yeah, tama po kayo doon, sir. Tama po kayo doon na rest is important and tayo-tayo rin magkakaibigan ay pwede namang magkamustahan. Tayo-tayo ang pwedeng maging support system ng isa't isa. Alright? I think we've accommodated all of their queries. Alright? Thank you again. Thank you again. Yes. Last few words na lang pala. Uh, for uh, for the lower years or even any uh, years for architectural students, I I want you guys. Uh, I really encourage you guys to join architectural competitions because uh, yun, tulad din ni Martha kanina, yung Ida na yun, I really joined that uh, competition and lot of lots of uh, competitions out there, design competitions, any design competitions out there. I suggest you guys and I. Uh, encourage you guys to join all of them because and dami mong matututunan uh, on those competitions mas lalawak yung benchmark mo as an architect or as a designer mas makita mo yung outside the school kung ano ba yung ginagawa ng ibang architectural students yung ginagawa ng ibang designers out there not just within your school but on surrounding uh, schools in maybe in Ubelt or even other schools in the Philippines or even out, uh, other schools in the globe makikita mo and mabe-benchmark mo na ah, ang dami pa palang opportunities uh, down the line that I can that I can join and mas gagaling ka maybe on your manual drawings, maybe on your digital translations of your design. And uh, when you go into fifth year, when you are in your thesis na, it will be a lot easier for you to uh, compete not compete, sorry but to, but to uh, finish your thesis. It will be a lot easier for you to do that. Yeah. yeah. Right. Actually, some of our PLM artistas will be participating po sa Archi Next this year. So, ayan nice. po. Um, Godspeed sa inyon. Kayang-kaya na yan. Yeah. Thank you again, our Mr. Reyes, for sharing with us your knowledge na babauna na ating mga artistas for their future projects. Nice. At this juncture, we would like to virtually give you this token of appreciation. Oh. Architecturo, an online lecture series. Certificate of Appreciation. This Certificate of Appreciation is hereby presented to Mr. Ken J. L. Reyes for imparting their knowledge and insights as guest speaker of Architecturo, an online lecture series held this 18th day of October 2020 as a part of the project staff via YouTube live stream. Together, let's take a step forward. Once again, thank you for Mr. Reyes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mr. Reyes, for that very insightful discussion. So that's a wrap. Uh, ayon, and also sabi nga ng ating dalawang speakers, remember now to take breaks, pause at times, and don't be guilty to do something not related. Mag-binge watch ka ng Netflix or just play games or whatever you want, kahit maka, ano ha. Basta, as long as you, as, as long as you take these quick breaks, uh, it will ease that the draining idea of doing plates at some point. So once again, thank you very much to both of our speakers, Miss Martha Thomas and, and Mr. Ken Reyes for sharing their precious time and wisdom with us in the first episode of Architecture. And to our viewers, we hope you have picked up a thing or two from today's webinar. Thank you for attending today. Please look forward to more of this in the next few months. For last few reminders, there will be a feedback form to be posted in our official Facebook page, PLM Kaup Student Council, right after this live stream. So please do take time to answer. Also, this live stream will be uploaded in this YouTube channel. So feel free to come back, rewatch anytime, and invite your friends who were not able to attend today. All right. Thank you so much again for our live viewers who attended for today. This is Architecturo. Once again, I am Angeli Pastrano.
And I am Dorothy Jane Del Rosario from the College of Architecture and Urban Planning Student Council, your host for Architectura. Thank you and have a good day, everyone.